I'm Peter Block here in Anaheim, California at the AHA Annual Meeting for On the Scene. And with me to my left is Andre Lamy from Hamilton, Canada. Andre is a cardiac surgeon and he has been kind enough to come and talk to me about an interesting subgroup analysis trial. Uh, it was a subgroup analysis, wasn't it, Andre? It's an economic analysis. Yeah, economic. an economic analysis of a trial of whether or not river oxaban can reduce bad outcomes and hence cost in patients with coronary disease and peripheral vascular disease. So, Andre, tell me about the trial first. Well, as you know, COMPASS trial was presented about a month ago. Uh, river oxaban 2.5 mg BID uh, reduced the primary outcome of uh, CV death, MI, and stroke. So the trial was quite positive, and we were looking at, interesting at the uh, economic impact of that new drug coming on the market. So uh, we in the United States don't have two and a half milligrams of river oxaban, nor do you in Canada. What's the plan for that? Let's start with that. Well, the, uh, the company, basically, Bayer, has to go to the FDA and the Canada Health and to do the same process to add the, uh, the drug to be uh, on the market. So it will take about a year. And of course, they will discuss with the various governments what the price will be. Okay, and that will be an important issue because the price will depend on how much we actually reduce cost. But tell me about the subgroups, then let's cut to the chase and talk about the outcomes. Well, the, uh, there's a strong reduction in the cost of cardiovascular events. About 15% of the overall budget for these events uh, is reduced, so it's quite significant. But in the subgroup, we have the coronary artery disease subgroup and the peripheral artery disease subgroup. So if you have only coronary artery disease, the reduction is about $360 per patient. But if you have PAD, the reduction is about $1,200 per, pa per patient. If you have both, then the reduction is about $1,600 per patient for the length of the trial. So it's quite significant. It's quite, it's quite interesting. Yeah, and it, uh, you know, patients with peripheral vascular disease commonly have coronary disease in association. So uh, tell me a little bit about the subgroups. There was two and a half. I won't take away your thunder. So tell me about the three subgroups. Well, it's 2.5 BID with aspirin. Uh, River Oxaban 5 mg BID without aspirin and aspirin alone, which was 100 mg once a day. Okay, and who was the big winner of those three? Oh, the big winner, of course, the 2.5 BID with aspirin, the, what we call the combo, it was a big winner. 25% uh, risk reduction in death, uh, MI, and stroke. It's, it's quite something. Yeah. So, going forward clinically, Andre, uh, as I think about this trial, it seems to me that the most important issue here that I can figure out is the combination really is a big winner, mm -hmm. and peripheral vascular disease seems to be a great target for this winning combination. Well, that's right. There's, uh, we don't have a drug that really works for the patient with uh, vascular disease. And I think that's the very first drug that works and it is safe for that uh, population of patients. So I think it, these, these patients will, uh, will be on that drug for sure. Okay, for all those folks out there taking care of patients with peripheral vascular disease, particularly and coronary disease, this combination needs to be kept a careful eye on. And okay. when we get two and a half milligrams of river oxaban, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Thank you so much, Andre. My pleasure.